This is Yusuf at John Hope Dweller, and I want to show you some things about documentary hypothesis and mention a few things about P. Now, we see, okay, the yellow is P, priest of the text. The pink is J, or Yahwehist, or Jehovahist, or Yahs. First page is all P. And it's all of chapter 1. And the first four verses of chapter two, and that's one one full creation story. And then beginning in uh, sorry, first three verses of chapter two, and then beginning in chapter two, we have the creation story of Jay with the Garden of Eden and uh, Eve coming out of the rib of Adam. He makes man. He said he made God. He made man in the image of God. Male and female, he made them. Then we have Jay going through all here with the records of Cain and all that. And we don't find P until the story of Noah, which I read both parts of it, uh, showing the differences. And it's P that gives the covenant of the rainbow. And what does it reiterate? It says, Whoever sheds man's blood by man his blood shall be shed for the image of God he made man and for you be fruitful and multiply and populate the earth abundantly and multiply in it and this be fruitful and multiply is all throughout P so I don't know if I should read you the beginning creation story of P and then go through uh, the Noah story of P which I had already read um, because I'm reading something that everybody from everybody knows you know in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was formless and void and the darkness was over the surface in the spirit of God moving over the face of the water and the seven-day creation right here um, now J begins J begins in the Bible it begins this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord had made the heaven and the earth. Now, no shrub one day, not a seven-day creation. Uh, and it talks about no, no uh, shrub had sprouted from the field yet until uh, God had sent down rain. Uh, and it talks about the Garden of Eden, and it goes into the fall of man. Uh, there's no fall of man story in P. Okay, and it goes, am I my brother's keeper? And it has all this thing about God. And God is walking in the garden. God seems to be a physical being. And we see that in Noah, too. We see that in Noah's flood story. And we have the redactor putting in the descendants of Adam and things like that. Okay, um, the covenant of the rainbow. And now God blessed Noah, this is P, and now God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The fear of you and the terror of you will be on every beast of the earth and every bird of the sky and everything that creeps around in the ground and all the fish of the sea. Into your hand they are given every moving thing that is alive shall be food for you. I give all to you as I give every green plant only that you shall eat the flesh of its life and that its blood you shall not eat the flesh with its with its life meaning the blood that is its blood surely I require your life blood from every beast I will require it and every man and every man's brother I will require the life of a man. For whoever sheds the blood of man, by man his blood shall be shed. For the image of God he made man. As for you, be fruitful and multiply, populate the earth abundantly, and multiply. So we see be fruitful and multiply three times in P. Uh, and this is chapter 9, so I mean... Basically, within 
if you were to put p in its own category within three pages, we see it three times if you recall and multiply, or possibly just two pages. And God spoke to Noah, saying to his sons, Now behold, I myself establish my covenant with you and with your descendants and with every living creature that is with you, the birds of the air, the cattle, every beast of the earth, of you that comes out of the ark, even every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you and all flesh. I shall never again cut off by the water of a flood, neither shall again the flood destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of my covenant which I am making between me and you, every living creature that is with you for all successive generations. I set my bow in the, in the cloud, the rainbow, and it shall be a sign and a covenant between me and the earth. I shall come, it shall come about when I bring a cloud over the earth, and a bow will be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all the flesh. Never again shall the water become a flood and destroy all flesh, when the bow in the cloud then I will look upon it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature and all the flesh of the earth. And God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all the flesh of the earth. Now notice, it's not man looking at the rainbow, it's God, because the creation is separate from God. The creation is doing its own thing. Now, after God created it, set it in motion, and he says, Whenever I see that, I will remember it. Now we get the P or now we get the J's version. Now the sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan and the three sons of Noah, and these came about and populated the earth. And Noah began farming and planting in the vineyard and drank, drank, drunk, blah blah blah. And then uh, you see P just deals with man as if he's a man, and it's just ma all mankind. And uh, he, there was no seven animals or anything like that brought on the ark, clean animals, because that wasn't seen until Sinai or Horeb. Um, but with P, since P didn't, or since J, the Yahweh, didn't understand, they thought, oh, the laws of God were from ever, so he had to have seven clean animals and everything. And it was already establishing, okay, the Shem was high and Ham was low and you have all these genealogies and races and everything where you don't find that in P, just man is equal. Um, and then P picks up. He goes, now these are the records. See, after you have you have uh, J here, here, going down here, you have P text. I mistakenly put that pink, so I put yellow over it, so it's kind of furry. So it's in chapter 10, P starts up again. P stops it's p starts at 9 and goes in from 91 to 917 and then you have j and then p picks up uh between uh, uh chapter 10 verse 1 to verse 7 uh now these are the records of the generations of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, Noah's sons who were born to them. The sons of Japheth were Gomar, Magog, Madai, Javelin, Tubal, Meshelech, Tiris, and the sons of Gomar were Ashkenaz. That's why the Ashkenazi Jews are called Ashkenazi, because they're not Semitic. They're not the descendants of Abraham. Rapha, Tomar, Javan, uh, uh, Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, uh, Dodem. From these, the coastlands and all the nations separated them to lands, and according to the languages, according to their families and their nations. The sons of Ham were Cush, Mizram, Put, Canaan, and the sons of Cush were uh, Seba, Havalin, Sabadin, Raham, Sebekah, 
and the sons of Raham were Sheba and Dadan. So we see uh, God didn't come down and confuse the language like in J. P text says it just naturally happened that the language naturally changed as they grew apart. And it says, and then we have a bunch of J going right here, and then P picks up. These are the sons of Ham according to the families and according to their languages and lands by nations. Uh, and then we have uh, interjection in P in 1021, and then we go to 1022, and we see P again, or injection of J, I mean, and then we see P again in 1022. The sons of Shem were Elam, Usher, Arach, Peshad, and Lud, and Aram, and the sons of Aram were Uz, and Hull, and Gether, and Mash. So those were the Semites. Uh, basically, the Jephthites were the Greeks, the basically Europeans, the Anatolians, up into Asia. The Semites were the Middle Eastern, and the Hamites were Middle Eastern and uh, either they think either Cush was in India because this was before. Uh, uh, Ethiopia being called Kush, but they think it might have been uh, Ethiopia as well, or not as well, but maybe that's a live possibility. But I don't believe that the sons of Ham mean uh, Africa at all, because they had no contact. I mean, if you look at the Sahara Desert, the way it separates, I don't think they had ever seen even a black person. Back then. Um, And then after that we get more J until it says these are the sons of Shem according to the families, according to their languages, by the lands, according to their nations, and these are the families and the sons of Noah, and their genealogies by their nations, and these are the nations which separated on the earth after the flood. So with J we get the Tower of Babel and God cursing the people and scattering them. With J, uh, the people weren't uh, divided by races. They were divided by languages and cultures, and there was a natural outgrowth. So as much as I don't like the, the law codes of P and how strict P is, uh, it looked at J and said, this is really retarded. I'm going to fix a lot of this. And remember, it's using the word L, my God, Elohim, and not uh, Yahweh. Uh, <clears throat> and then we have in 11 we have going back to J and then we have a lot of the redactor notes in here and then from that last part where it says after the flood because keep in mind it keeps saying according to the languages the lands and according to their nations so it was never it's not a racial thing humanity is seen as just one race uh, in J you have these different races and it's very weird it says Terah became the father of Abram uh, Nohor and Haran. Haran became the father of Lot. Haran died in the presence of the father Terah in the land of the birth in Ur of the Chaldeans. Abram and Nor took wives of themselves, and the name of Abram, Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nera's wife was uh, Milcah, and the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, was Iska. And Sarai was barren, she had no child. Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarah, his wife, his, uh, his daughter-in-law, his son, Abram's wife, and they went out together from Ur and the Chaldeans in order to enter the land of Canaan. Uh, and they went far as Har Haran and settled there. So it's not Abraham rebelling against his father, Terah the father, and the family, uh, Lot, Sarai, and Abram, uh, took off and moved. And then in 12, we've got a lot more J until it comes to Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all the their possessions which they had accumulated and the persons which they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. Thus they came into the land of Canaan. 
and then you've got a lot more J and then it goes to it, it I mean a lot of J and into 13 then 13 6 we see P come out again and the land could not sustain them for a while for them while dwelling together for their possessions were so great that they were not able to remain together and then we have a lot of J jumping in and then we go back uh, so in 13 it goes from 6 is P and then 11 is P it says so Lot chose for himself the valley of Jordan and Lot journeyed eastward thus separated from each other Abraham settled in Canaan and Lot settled in the cities of the valley and moved his tents as far as Sodom see how it it basically flows like a normal story and then we've got a whole bunch of J J J J J J J J J J until chapter 16 16 3 after Abraham lived 10 years in the land of Canaan Abram's wife Sarai took Hagar the Egyptian her maid and gave her to his to her husband Abram as his wife and then we've got a lot of J again until we get to chapter or until we get to the last line in 16 which is 1615 and then it goes to 17 and 17 we've got a lot of P it says so Hagar bore Abram a son and Abram called his son whom Hagar bore him Ishmael Abraham or Abram was 86 years old and Hagar bore Ishmael to him now Abram was 99 years old the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Not Yahweh, not Lord. I am God Almighty. Probably El Shaddai, I'm guessing. Um, it's what it's translated from, or El Elan, uh, or El Olam, whatever. Uh, Walk before me and be blameless. I will establish my covenant between you, between me and you. I will... I will multiply you exceedingly. Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you will be with your father of you will be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations, and I will make you exceedingly fruitful and I will make the nations of you, and the kings will come forth from you, and I will establish my covenant. See, it keeps establishing covenants. Uh, unlike Jay, between me and you and your descendants afterwards, and all of chapter 17 is P. So I don't think I need to go and read that. And then you see all of 18 and all chapters 18, 19 uh, to be... Uh, J except uh, 1929, which is uh, excerpt from P, and then we start seeing the introduction of E, which begins with Abraham, and then from 21 to uh, 21 1 through 5, we see P again. So P, P even though it's in our cut. It flows just like a story, and it makes a hell of a lot more sense. Actually, I think it's uh, P's, uh, P came, well, priestly text came from uh, uh, somebody who actually thought about uh, the world, probably was inspired in a lot of ways, and uh, I think gives a better account of creation and, and God's dealing with mankind. God isn't this petty, vengeful little thing that's uh, basically like a human being who changes his mind. He's the cosmic God. And he doesn't believe in different races. There's only uh, one race, the human race, and mankind is divided by nations and languages and lands. Uh, he didn't curse the, the language of, of the people. Uh, I, I almost think P, uh, what we call P in J, or P in Genesis, might be E. But uh, if you just read P up until chapter 18, just P, it's a beautiful story. There's no horror. It's God created the heavens and the earth. 
um, a flood came uh, uh, because of I don't know why he gives the thing for the flood. I think he said it's because man became wicked uh, through his actions. It wasn't that they disobeyed God. They were just jerks. I mean, there was no law given yet. That's why when it records uh, the animals on the ark, it doesn't, it says two of every kind. It doesn't say and seven clean animals because that wasn't given yet. The laws at Sinai weren't given yet. Where the Yahwehist, J, uh, is following kosher law as if it's as if they were following the laws of Moses back uh, in the days of Noah and Abraham uh, so as much as I talk negatively about P uh, P has a lot to say for itself P uh, is uh, well, I J is the one I least like um, but I'm an E man myself so as much as I, I talk bad about P uh, uh, P in Genesis is fantastic. Uh, peace to you. I just wanted to point that out. I figured it would be boring for everybody if I just read uh, the chapter one creation story and then Noah, which I had already read, and then gone from that. So I just started it after the flood subsided and then went on from that. And you can see that it's it naturally flows. There's nothing edited out. It was everything was just interwoven. That's why we get these doublets of stories because P took one look at J or at that time E J and said, "What? This makes God look like a human being. This looks like paganism. Uh, God is the cosmic God because remember, God looks at the rainbow and remembers it. It's not man looking at it and God's doing the things in the clouds. Uh, P is the cosmic God, and I suspect." Uh, Maybe there was a difference between the P writer of this and the P writer of the law. Or at least I hope so. Hope so very much because uh, this P in Genesis, who only calls God El or Elohim, that's my God. The J is the, uh, it's basically the paganized Yahweh. They're Yahweh, Yahweh. They didn't even know what they were saying. And it's E that explains that I am that I am. I am the existing one. I am the God above gods. I'm not even a God in the sense of everybody else around you. I am the existing one, you know, just like us Eastern Orthodox say. So just wanted to make a video talking about that. Peace to you. And remember, uh, this was in reaction to uh, J. And it was trying to refute EJ because it just it saw it as disgusting as stupid. And it was later because the prophets don't mention P at all. Peace to you. Then we have J going through all here with the records of Cain and all that. And we don't find P until the story of Noah, which I read both parts of it uh, showing the differences. And it's P that gives the covenant of the rainbow. And what does it reiterate? It says, Whoever sheds man's blood by man, his blood shall be shed. For the image of God he made man. And for you, be fruitful and multiply and populate the earth abundantly. And multiply. The first four verses of chapter 2. And that's one, one full creation story. And then beginning in, uh, sorry, first three verses of chapter 2. And then beginning in chapter 2, we have the creation story of Jay with the Garden of Eden and uh, Eve coming out of the rib of Adam. He makes man, he said, he made God, he made man in the image of God. Male and female, he made them. Multiply in it. And this be fruitful and multiply is all throughout P. So I don't know if I should read you the beginning creation story of P and then go through uh, the Noah story of P, which I had already read, um, because I'm reading something that everybody from, everybody knows. You know, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless, and void, and the darkness was over the surface, and the Spirit of God moving over the face of the water. And the seven-day creation right here. Um, now, J begins, J begins in the Bible, it begins. This is the account of the heavens and the earth 
when they were created in the day that the Lord had made the heaven and the earth. Now, no shrub one day, not a seven-day creation. Uh, and it talks about no, no uh, shrub had sprouted from the field yet until uh, God had sent down. This is Yusuf at John Hut Dweller. And I want to show you some things about documentary hypothesis and mention a few things about P. Now, we see, okay, the yellow is P, priest of the text. The pink is J, or Yahwehist, or Jehovahist, or Yahs. First page is all P. And it's all of chapter 1. And 